I just always loved it. It's that feeling that, that you just can't describe and that you just never want to end. People would be nice to us like behind the scenes and off stage, but then like they get on stage and like talk shit about us like on stage and be like, what is this electronic music? Take that gun. I'm Jake and welcome to Chaotic Web. Today we're traveling back to a time when social media was just beginning to take off and the internet discovered they could have pop stars of their own. The Millionaires were an electro-pop supergroup who saw their rise on MySpace and very quickly after, Vans Warped Tour, but also faced much controversy, creating an aesthetic of their own that was quickly torn apart by the music industry at large and was even used on one of the most iconic pop stars of the late 2010s, Kesha. This is the story of an underground movement that loved to party, dress up, dress down, and most importantly, didn't give a f <laughs> Speaking of DGAP, I like not having to worry about my flimsy, fragile iPhone 14 Pro Max shattering, combusting, and deteriorating at every waking moment. And that's why I love using today's sponsor, Caseify. They are the world's most popular tech accessory brand and are known for their protective phone cases and global collaborations. If you're in search of some extreme protection for your phone, the bounce case is perfect. The expanded corners and EcoShock impact absorption tech lets your phone simply bounce instead of shatter. Plus, there are over two 2,000 customizable prints to choose from, keeping your phone as unique as you are. If you prefer a more low-profile, sleek case that shows off your phone, get the Caseify Clear Case. It is anti-yellowing with UV Defender technology, and despite being slimmer, the Clear Case exceeds military-grade protection with 6.6-foot drop protection. The cases are also made from 65% recycled and plant-based material. And my favorite part of Caseify is their art program. They support artists and artists' communities from around the world. You can look through artist design cases that fit your style and know your purchase will support that individual artist. So go to casetify.com slash deep dive today to get 15% off your order. Casetify also has so many other accessories for your technology. So don't forget to go to casetify.com slash deep dive today for 15% off your order. In the year 2003, a website would be created that would decentralize and democratize the entire music industry as the world knew it. MySpace was created by a group of employees already working at an early social media networking site called Friendster. And within days of starting the project, MySpace's user base would jump to millions and millions of users. MySpace's key to success was its lack of paywall, thus giving it the most extensive user base of any platform during the time period it launched. Everyone had a MySpace, and through coding, people were even able to customize their pages, thus causing people's MySpace pages to become an extension of their personality and identity. It even created an entire ecosystem where coders would help other MySpace users create their own pages. It truly was the first digital accessory, and musicians and artists alike immediately flocked to the platform, making it absolutely massive from the start. In 2005, News Corp beat out Viacom in a bidding war for MySpace.com. This was major for the platform, as News Corp was keeping a close eye on the up-and-coming website Pure Volume, a website modeled after the 2003 defunct website mp3.com, where musicians and bands alike could share music files and discover new artists all on the internet. This was absolutely revolutionary for the time, and was only being used by up-and-coming underground artists. Some of the bands launched on Pure Volume include My Chemical Romance, Paramore, 21 Pilots, All Time Low, Panic at the Disco, and even Fall Out Boy. News Corp knew that MySpace already had a massive massive user base, so opening up the floodgates and allowing them to share music would be a complete game changer. Thus, very quickly after the acquisition, they quickly launched MySpace Music, a feature that allowed MySpace users to upload and play other users' MP3 files. Right, when you go to a MySpace page, I've heard the, the metaphor that it's like somebody's bedroom, 
you know, you can see the, the posters on the wall and the music that's playing and all the, the books that they have on their shelves or, you know, something like that where you really get a sense for who they are by looking at their living room or their bedroom. And it's very similar on a MySpace page and the music is a big part of that. This was one of the first commercially successful and mainstream approaches at a mainstream music service. And multiple musicians began to achieve mainstream success. Some of the most notable being Nicki Minaj, Katy Perry, Jeffree Star, 303, Tyga, and Waka Flocka Flame. MySpace had the power to transform someone rapping in their bedroom to an international power brand. And Melissa Marie, Allison Green, and Danny Artob knew they wanted a taste of that fame. And MySpace was their first ticket. Allison Green and Melissa Marie are two sisters who attended Catholic school in California. Forever in music lessons, their mother wanted to ensure they were multi-talented. However, the year was also 2007 and Melissa would need a MacBook for school. One night when messing around with their new computer, Melissa and Allison recorded a song on GarageBand and quote, screamed into the MacBook mic as they didn't have a recording system. That song was I Like Money, the first official Millionaires demo uploaded to MySpace. And it was a completely new sound. Drop it down, raise it up, side to side, left to right. Lick your lips, flip your hair, watch it sweat over there. High heels, makeup, thick eyelashes. Look at you, you're so damn posh. Your hair looks on with orange skin. That life will really made you thin. Within hours, their music began receiving more attention than either Melissa or Allison had received in their entire lives. And it didn't take them long to go absolutely viral. The next day, Melissa's best friend Danny R. Todd would join them and form the Millionaires. So we need plays on our player because we want to get on that- The that, top that, artist! That, that top artist is dog. Okay, we're almost there, we're <laughs> almost there, but if you don't, let's <laughs> You can listen to that shit on iTunes, okay? Yeah, and you're not gonna we, buy the songs. You can't buy it if you already have can't it. Buy it, okay? Like, I know. Okay, when we get more popular, here, here, well, here. Wait, wait, wait! We'll I'm explaining. explaining. No, we're explaining okay. right now. When we get more popular, we'll let you download that shit. But like right now, we're just trying to get on the, the top, top artist because we need to be like, we need to be real. We have to be a real band. We don't want to be a f loser. Loser. <laughs> okay, we're the real band. Within weeks, they were already on the MySpace Top Artist charts. And with their second viral hit, Ho Down, they officially began taking off on MySpace in a way no one had ever seen. Now, as the millionaires had no label holding them back, they were able to release songs instantaneously with a completely new kind of interactive promotion, social media. In just a few short months, the millionaires already had enough songs to play a set, and they wanted to try their hand at performing in front of a live audience. So in November of the same year, they started their band, they teamed up with DJ Hyphy Krunk to bring the millionaires to a live audience. The very next night, they played at the Roxy in Hollywood. Melissa, Danny, and Allison were a real, verifiable group now. And very shortly, they would be taken to the next level. See, Melissa's high school prom date was none other than Trey Cyrus, frontman of Metro Station and brother of pop global superstar Miley Cyrus. Trace and Melissa would begin a public relationship, and he would introduce Melissa to Mark Maxwell, a music producer who would help the millionaires completely reinvent their sound. At this point, the millionaires had completely blown up in the underground, and they needed managers, agents, and people to organize their tours for them. So they signed with Panic at the Disco's management, Crush. This was a big vibe shift for the millionaires, as they were normally very lo-fi and completely stationed online. But now they were about to take major stages. And it did make sense, due to Trey Cyrus already being signed to Crush, and the millionaires and Metro Station being so intertwined. Now, in July 2008, the millionaires embarked on their first co-headlining tour with Breathe Carolina. This was a massive step for them, as this was one of their first actual real ventures as the millionaires. And while on tour, they got the opportunity of a lifetime to play on MTV TRL in front of millions of people. However, this was also their first sign at the industry's pushback at them as musical artists. As immediately after their rehearsal, MTV told them they needed to clean up their lyrics for the live performance, or they will lose out on major opportunities. The world just wasn't quite ready to hear three scene queens sing about getting fucked up and making money. If you find any of the words in the category of slut, fuck, bitch, ass, cunt, whore, dick, shit, heat seeking cock missile, inappropriate, please make your way to the nearest exit immediately. So 
as mentioned before, the millionaires were already getting heat for their edgy lyrics. In the mid to late 2000s, when the millionaires were exploding, double entendre and innuendo were as far as most radio hits would take their lyricism, or it would be censored altogether. And this type of lyricism coming from this type of sound was a completely new concept for the time. For radio play, I don't know if it could get played right now, because you guys were talking that shit. Like you guys yeah. were, were we very in. abrasive, but but confident, and well, it was like it's a, yeah, it's like very offensive, maybe even at hell, this hell point, yeah. And I'm all care. I'm all here for it now, but like obviously the culture has shifted yeah. since then. Yeah, you know, it's a moment when we time. were in our youth, yeah. we didn't give a. F it's about cool. a lot of things. It's like it encapsulated. Yeah. Yeah. Thus, even though it proved to be controversial, the millionaires stuck to their concepts and visions. Their fans felt a sense of freedom at their shows, and they began to cultivate an entire community. The millionaires were incredibly interactive, and being massive MySpace celebrities came with tons of direct connections with their fans. With each song and project, the millionaires steered further away from the mainstream and further into the electronic MySpace sound of the time. And this proved to be massively successful. Successful. Where other MySpace musicians were beginning to commercialize, the millionaires' fans loved them because they stayed true to themselves and they felt like they knew them. No matter how many items they're pelted with or how many booze they dealt with, they pushed forward to party hardy with their fans. And this would cause them to party right onto one of the most iconic music festival tours of all time. Vans Warped Tour. <laughs> Warp Tour 2009, this time with the millionaires. Mm -hmm. What's up? Working, living. Um, now, do you guys have anything you would like to say to your haters? We love you, and I'm gonna kill you with love. And keep it coming. We like to snuggle. Yes. I like to snuggle. We're I like pretty to good snug. at snuggling. Who wants a good snuggle? Come on, hater, come snuggle with me. <laughs> then we did Warp Tour in 2009. So that was really fun. Hell yeah. But also controversial, you know. So yeah. <laughs> but I had a fun time. It was yeah. cool. I liked yeah. the controversy at the time at the Warp Tour. Yeah, yeah. Area because it just was just like silly. We were just like, F like. <laughs> Dude, yeah. <Warped laughs> we don't care. For like, sure. What you guys? You guys were getting a lot of like hate from. Yeah, like Warped from Tour. the other bands and stuff too. Oh you know? yeah. So, but Which I, I thought it was funny to like be confrontational about yeah. it though, because people would be nice to us like behind the scenes and off stage, but then like they get on stage and like talk to us like on stage and be like, what is this? Yeah, music. That's uh, whack because you know. it's funny because Warp Tour is like you look back on it now, R.I.P. Um, and it's a situation where it's like the epitome of high school vibes, you know? Like yeah. Fans Warped Tour represents an entire genre of music during a specific moment in time. Starting in 1998 and peaking during the MySpace generation, Warped Tour was the absolute holy mecca of MySpace musicians. Anyone who's anyone on MySpace would be there and tons of people could finally meet the friends they'd been cultivating online. This aspect of the event made it huge. It was like a traveling punk rock Coachella, and everyone dressed up. The Millionaires were one of the first girl groups to dominate Warped Tour, and unfortunately, it didn't come without major, major backlash from the Warped Tour crowd, saying in an interview that their reception was half and half. Now, later in a Paper Magazine interview, more shocking details would emerge. Throughout the summer, the Millionaires were forced to move stages several times because the bands before them would rile up the audience by openly insulting the trio. Melissa said, we were always sandwiched between the two hardest heavy metal bands because of the layouts of the stages. That was really dangerous because people in the audience would throw stuff. Danny remembers being hit in the head with shoes, water bottles, and full bags of fruit. And Melissa says she was once violated. Danny said, people couldn't handle us, especially men. Our sets would infuriate them. As the millionaires rapped about hooking up and downing shots, they did full choreography, sometimes quote, simulating s acts with each other. It was a completely different vibe and message from the ferocious guitar-driven bands that they performed alongside. One Tennessee Warped Tour date, the millionaires were booked to perform with A Day to Remember, a band whose sound was critically referred to as Pop Mosh. The girls begged not to do it, saying they're going to eat us alive, but were forced into playing the show by their management. As expected, the response to their music was intense. Dollar bills were tossed about as if they were strippers. Girlfriends in the crowd didn't like that their boyfriends were watching, as the millionaires said that was always a big issue for them. 
and insults were freely flung at the stage. The millionaires are quoted saying they even had to stop our set because it was getting so crazy. Even the sound guy was talking sh to us. I remember yelling at this guy who was calling us sleep. It was really intense. And we were always just trying to have fun and make fun songs. Looking back now, what we were doing was really quote, feminist and badass. They unfortunately would have to fend off haters for the majority of their Vans Warped Tour career. While they may have had fans, they unfortunately had to deal with horrible booking agents who would book them before the worst crowds. But each of the millionaires pushed forward. They were truly ahead of their time and represented a complete sexual freedom. When they started popping off, they began collaborating with huge MySpace stars like Jeffree Star and even Melissa's boyfriend's band Metro Station. 2009 would bring fame, fortune, and recognition to Allison, Danny, and Melissa. They would even finally sign a record deal with Be Unique Records in the UK. However, in August of 2009, when the millionaires were touring on Warp Tour, a song would hit the radio stations that would completely shake up the careers of the three scene queens. Tick Tock by Kesha was an electropop, carefree song all about partying with a unique rap delivery and heavy autotune, making it the perfect dance song to kick off the new decade. Tick Tock would quickly soar to the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 and would stay there for nine weeks, eventually being certified eight times platinum to Dr. Luke in 2005 for a six album deal, binding her to Dr. Luke's recording and publishing companies until the six albums are completed. Dr. Luke would completely shelve Kesha for the first three years, putting her in a limbo state of not being able to advance her music career at all. Luckily in 2008, Kesha went to the recording studio where Flo Rida was recording the song Right Round, and they needed a female vocal, and since Kesha just happened to be the there, she provided the vocal. And when Right Round was released in early 2009, it was a huge hit. Why the dollar sign in your name, Kesha? Okay, that, honestly, I was trying to be ironic. Mm. Because, let me explain this to you. It's not because I'm like, yeah, I got lots of money, money, woo. It's more like, I don't have any money. So I'm money because I don't have any. Because this was at a point where I was on the track with Flo Rida and I was yeah. hearing it everywhere while I'm like shopping at the dollar store for canned vegetables. This got Kesha noticed behind the scenes and that's when she started working on TikTok and her first studio album titled Animal with Dr. Luke and Max Martin. When the Millionaires fans first heard Kesha's hit single, some actually thought for a moment it was the Millionaires blasting through their radio speakers. As Kesha's aesthetic, her electropop beats mixed with the speak singing lyrics about drinking and partying appeared to be a commercialized, censored version of the Millionaires. And the Millionaires were furious to say the least. In an interview with The Sun, Melissa Marie blasted Kesha, saying, we hate Kesha. She is such a fake. She is not real. She signed a people who tell her how to act. That's what makes us upset. We are who we have been since before the band. We are real, not like that white trash bitch. This is how we dress every day. This is not how she dresses. She better watch her back. We're gonna take her down. It's three against one, TikTok bitch. Now, in an interview with Paper Magazine, Melissa stated, quote, we worked with producers in the music industry, so we heard all the gossip. Dr. Luke had admitted to someone that he stole our whole persona. Now, Dr. Luke has been in the media frequently through the years for taking his quote inspiration too far. Regularly being criticized for plagiarism, Dr. Luke has also been in litigation against people who claim he has stolen songs. Danny Artaud tweeted out, her, Kesha, and Dr. Puke team quite literally ripped off our entire look and sound. Our management wanted us to start a feud with her, which I thought to be futile because she's an industry plant and already on the radio. They capitalized off our grassroots creativity, so yeah, she did. I I agree it was definitely mostly him, but you can imagine being in our position how it could make you a bit salty toward everyone involved. Years later in 2014, Kesha would come forward with the abuse she suffered at the hands of Dr. Luke, sparking a years-long legal battle where to this day, Kesha is still bound to that original six-album contract she signed at only 18 years old in 2005. Kesha hinted to Rolling Stone that she doesn't have creative control over her music, and in 2014, she dropped the dollar sign from her name, stating it was part of a facade. Now, once the millionaires learned about what had been going on behind the scenes, they showed their public support for the hashtag Free Kesha movement, tweeting out, who thinks Kesha Rose should be the third millionaire? We'd bang out hits all day. Hashtag 
hashtag free Kesha. Now back to 2010, everything that happened with Kesha only lit a fire under the millionaires, and they got signed by a label in the UK. The next year would not be so fortunate, as Be Unique proved to be a strange fit for the group. The New Guardian's Band of the Week UK publication featuring the millionaires called their music trash pop or pop that's trash. This caused them to get extreme online bullying. However, they also began venturing back into the MTV machine as they recorded the theme song for Life with Liz, as well as A Double Shot at Love, the sequel to Tila Tequila's dating show with the Icky Twins. However, the shows they were playing got bizarre, as Be Unique didn't know where to book the millionaires. They were booking them for far too rowdy crowds. And even though the millionaires were wildly popular with their MySpace fans, the UK proved to be absolutely grueling. So much so that eventually the inevitable would happen. In 2010, Danny Artop would drop out of the millionaires due to the constant nonstop vitriol. Being in the UK was extremely hard for Danny, so she moved back to the US. And because Danny quit their record deal, what they had worked on up until that point was completely scrapped. The world may never know what tracks the millionaires would have released during this era. But Danny said Melissa and Allison were like sisters to her, but she made the right choice for her and could not go back up on stage any longer. And in 2010, Melissa and Allison released Cash Only EP, which were songs all three of them sang and recorded back in New York. Right as Allison and Melissa were dropped from Be Unique in the UK, they would finally release their debut mixtape as The Millionaires, just this time without Danny. On May 15th, 2012, The Millionaires released their mixtape Your Girl Does Party with tracks featuring Creation, Trina Diamond, Chanel Woodgett, Nightclub Fight Club, and even Riff Raff. The Millionaires released their debut album, Tonight, on March 13th, 2013, and with 11 songs, the album was the last full-length project The Millionaires would release. They would release a few more songs from 2014 to 2022, including a parody of the Chainsmokers song Let Me Take a Selfie, called Hashtag MySpace Pick. They would even briefly reunite with Trey Cyrus for a remix of Dat Boy with the Knuckle Dusters. Needless to say, the millionaires were musical visionaries who brought an entire vibe and sound to whatever they were creating. So much so that in 2016, Melissa and Allison were cross on Oxygen's hit reality show, Bad Girls Club, Twisted Sisters. We're in a group called Millionaires, it's just my sister and I. We rap and sing. A lot of people try to compare us to like Kesha, but there's two of us and we're Asians. When you hear a rap song, they degrade the women. Yeah. It's, fun. it's fun to sing along. So we try to turn it around yeah. so it's just like we yeah, start, like, no, we're in charge you yeah know I mean? you suck our tits yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go we have a degaff till we die crew degaff means don't give a f it's the motto you know don't give a f d, d g a f <laughs> if i want something i'm gonna get it i think that's what being bad is well you started getting very opinionated but in junior high school that's when i started my period dad <laughs> is that right yeah. <laughs> i take it word for it <laughs> going to the band being exposed to like everyone on social media and also never blasting you and saying the rudest things that you can. I think that's what made us be bad girls because like, they just judge us, like I guess, from like exterior, first of all. I so get a lot of hate for some reason. Maybe it's the bow. If you can't talk to them, I guess you gotta put them in their place. We use our physical hands normally, like physical violence to solve any problems. We're like ratchet type crazy girl, like party, like in your face. I'm for sure gonna drink. I do it every single day. I drink, 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 drink. That's all of it, you know? We're yeah. in for this for the experience, for sure. Oh, yeah. Just to open just our... Just to see Maybe what... just to open our eyes. Look at my tattoo that's boss right there. <laughs> Mother the Millionaires represent a transitional moment in time for American culture. They were truly musical internet pioneers who paved the way for artists like Kesha to release the music they do today. Now, today, The Millionaires have remained relatively quiet. That is, except for Melissa. She is still going strong, and on August 14th, 2022, Melissa announced that she would continue as a solo artist, saying, 15 years ago today, I started Millionaires on MySpace. I decided to have fun today and retake the photo from the first photo photo shoot, since it's just me now anyways, lol. Thank you for all of my OG hashtag DGAF TWDC who have supported me and still continue to support me while I continue Millionaires as a single artist. And with that, Allison dropped out of the Millionaires, leaving Melissa as the final Millionaire standing. Now, that's not to say Allison and Danny both quit music. I mean, Allison did and became a permanent Instagram baddie, but Danny Artaud is out releasing new music under the name Snowblood, and I'm so glad she's continuing the electric electronic experimental legacy she helped pioneer.